Now today we're going to talk about keeping it light. First of my century, Richard Tucker, the first thing he said to me is get a good breath under that. And the second thing he said to me was keep it light, really light, like this. <laughs> oh my gosh, what? <laughs> the, the, the walls were rattling, the, uh, my head was uh, splitting, and I thought, he said keep it light. <laughs> so anyway, I thought maybe we'd talk about that a little bit today. Um, when you keep it light, you basically are avoiding clamping your vocal cords together so tightly that the whole vocal cord and whole apparatus starts trying to vibrate when you sing. And uh, I remember one time I talked to the to one of the throat doctors in the in the uh, one of the really sort of the official throat doctor for the Hessen State Theater in Germany. And I said, what is it that you look for all the time? He said, well, we want, to, we want to make sure all the singers just use the edges of their vocal cords. And I said, the edges? You mean we're not supposed to vibrate the whole thing? He said, yeah, they vibrate, but, but we are not supposed to apply uh, a breath to, to, the, to a tightly closed glottis. We're supposed to keep everything really lightly. Remember, one molecule kisses the other molecule. So they go, mm. now how do I turn that into a, into a singing sound. And the whole idea is to give volume but not blow air. So I can give more voice, more sound, but I cannot give more air. So if I breathe, I go, So we all are acquainted with that one as the crescendo de crescendo or as it's called, La Messa di Voce, in Italian. <clears throat> but it's an old, used to be the most important of all vocalises. For a couple hundred years, there weren't any other vocalises. You, you, you learned music, you did scales to learn music, but the basic production of the, of the voice was based on that, on that one vocalise. So the idea is to go, find your smallest sound, so the things that seems to mystify everybody, how do I make that sound without blowing more air? Well, we don't really know, and the doctors don't know, and nobody really knows, and we don't care. We do, we're trying to sing like we're underwater, and we don't want to make any bubbles. When I told the, the, the throat doctor that, he said, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. They're taught in medical school that air has to pass through to, to vibrate the vocals. Well, fine. The beauty of using just the edges and trying to attack by using the edges is you don't need very much air at all. It's a minute amount. And we show that by using very light tissue paper. And we go... notice that the paper does not move. The amount of air that is being used is so tiny that it's hard to even measure it. Uh, another vocalist that is good for singers is uh, to sing with the your touch, your tip of your nose touching the mirror, right? If I go, <clears throat> let's see, let me clean the mirror, and I go like this. Now touch the tip of the, tip of the mirror with my nose, and I go, and then I look and see if there's any fog, almost none. Uh, sometimes the warmth, they've got a very short nose, so people with very short noses very often get warmth on the mirror, and it will fog it up a little bit. But they say ideally is to leave no fog at all whatsoever, which I've never accomplished in my life, but I've got a few students have done. So if you want to do that as a vocalist, especially if you have a long nose, it'd be great to go. Now, we've all talked about, by this time, we've all talked about breast tops, and breast tops have been done really on location with, uh, uh, on lo various locations with two steps. One is to blow. Pa, and the other is to stop the breath. Pa. So if I use the tip of my nose, I go pa. You'll notice the paper again doesn't move. On any of these breath tops that I do, 
And I can give you the name of a, of a great singer that used every one of them, which is why I got them. <coughs> um, the one of the tip of the nose I just used was uh, Alfredo Kraus. When he got it from the Tamaño school, he went to this famous school that was founded by Francesco Tamaño, and I don't remember where it was. It was in Spain, Santander maybe, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, that was his whole thing, don't leak air. And he had, uh, basically, he had two, two breath stops. He did the one on the tip of the nose, and he had the one uh, remotely on the tip of his finger. So he'd go, pa, but the main thing is the breath doesn't leak. So if I put this paper out here by my finger and I go, pa, pa, then we have Pavarotti holding the handkerchief like this all the time. Somebody said, why are you holding that handkerchief all in front of you like that? He said, because I watch it and if it moves, I know I'm not singing well. So what do you think moves that paper then? Pa, that's what moves the paper. So if I don't let my air uh, come out and I, and I keep my breath stop under control, I get So that's two great singers we know already, Alfredo Kraus and Luciano Pavarotti, who use something to, to remind them that they must not disturb it and they must not let the air get, go out there. They must stop the breath wherever they can. One stopped it on the fingertip and one stopped it on the handkerchief. And uh, they had their, 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 their uh, support methods, that, you know, their point of leaning. So maybe it stopped there, but it's all imagination. And we don't know. I know that if I imagine some of the things that the great singers have imagined, it works for me too. So if we can get some of these things going, so we go through these breath stops. Now, here's the next thing we have to learn. This is somewhat new to most of you. If I do a third step, here's two steps. Pa, 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 pa. The third step is this one. Pa, pa. So I stopped my breath again and used it to make a very, very tiny sound. And when I do a crescendo de crescendo, that's what I'm supposed to do with my breath. So if I do on the lips, I go pa, pa. Do this on any of the breath stops. You notice we've already been through some remote stops, and now we're having an interior stop. Uh, some people call that uh, uh, singing is inhaling, drink the tone in, slide back and down. Oh dear. Uh, so the idea is to get ourselves organized so that we can absolutely control the breath any way we want to. And there is a stop that we do. There's no doubt about it. Oh, phones. Anyway, if I go, where was that stop? Where is this one? And this one? On the lips, pa. Oh, and inside. If I bypass my lips and put it in the back of my neck, then I'm in the Joan Sutherland and Franco Covelli school of seeing the back of the neck, and it worked like a charm for both of them. So if I, if I go, pa, bypass the lips, pa, pa, Ba, now my breath to stop. Now I do my little one there. Pa. I can change the dynamics simply by giving sound and not blowing air. It's a little bit confusing because, you know, when you talk to the doctors, I've been to pulmonologists, I went to lar laryngologists, and they don't really know how we do it either. <laughs> 
So maybe I've got to find somebody that maybe is a specialist in air pressure or something. I don't know. It's done somehow inside the body, but this is the way uh, that I learned it. And it's the way the sort of great singers that I talked to and interviewed and tried to imitate and steal from. It's the way they described it. Uh, <clears throat> there's a third step that we do. If I'm gonna, let's say I'm going to do these, I'm going to move these breast stops around and let's see where they go. Here's one at the top of my head, Yon Kipura. Pa, pa, all of that is based on this little teeny sound, and I'm giving enough um, volume, enough sound, to actually use it in a theater or an orchestra. So then it brings up this other little question about if I go mm. in that crescendo, what percentage should I use? I've got, mm. let's see, that's one. I go, mm. so that's 100, 100%, <clears throat> then I do half of it. So, if you think you're a dramatic singer or a held in tenor or baritone or something, or some kind of heroic uh, uh, soprano, dramatic soprano, you better stop and think. Whatever you use vocally in the theater in a professional world, you use half of it. You never get out there and take a chance and blow yourself and blow hard with, with more air. It's very dangerous, and any number of singers have lost their voices completely. They damaged the voice, they tore something loose, they damaged the nerve. As long as you back off, nothing goes through your air, it's through your throat, but air. And once it's in the body or out of the body, we call it breath. So the breath is your best friend or your worst enemy. If it comes up there and starts leaking through your voice, especially under pressure in some big dramatic note, it can wreck your voice. You damage your nerve, you lose your voice forever. Uh, some people tear the vocal cord loose and they sew it back and the voice doesn't work anymore the way it did. See? So the idea is to never sing with more than half. So, which means if I sang a I'll, I'll confess, I've sung some performances like that. And when I did, it was sort of gratifying and sort of good for my ego or whatever. The people go, oh, Mike, you're a real held in tenor, a young held in tenor. Oh, my gosh, well, you're a dramatic tenor, blah, 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 blah. And then some old famous old bass, uh, um, uh, Grudlow Frick was one of them, fabulous singer, fabulous bass, and he'd come over and give me a poke in the ribs in the middle of a magic flute and say, schlank singing, schlank singing, which means sing slender. And it's a tradition uh, among professional singers to sing in theater, especially in Germany where you can sing every night for a lifetime. <laughs> uh, the idea is you learn how to survive and you are in danger every time that you sing with some kind of big uh, amount of air blowing through there, and it's simply wrong. So what I should do is practice my breath stops, right? Let's say I do the third eye. Pa, pa. How much am I using? Is that 50%? 40%? And I'm doing it by basing everything on a breath stop. Once the air is stopped, I, um, I can use actually less of it or more of it, which is uh, really sort of up to me and my decision and how, how much risk do I want to take. If I keep going down, like we did the tip of the nose and there's the mustache, there's another one. Pa! How much do I really need to use to sing to be heard in a big theater or a big orchestra? And then we fall back and we depend on the acoustical magic or miracle of the voice. We know that little babies that are this long are going, ah, 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 and their voices carry like rockets. So there's nothing coming out of them. If you hold one of these, in front of your baby's mouth, and you go, ah, 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 ah
the way the paper doesn't move. They are only sending out sound, and they are not blowing air through their through their vocal cords. So we come on down. Now let's do. Here's the lips. Pa pa. Right, and then I do the famous pedicule, uh, uh suspended stop right in the middle of the mouth. Go right there. Pa. And there, there are these breath stops all over the place, and we can use them all we want. There's a the Mario Domonico used this one right here, and he sang Otello 467 times and never had a vocal problem, plus all the other big Italian repertoire. He sang, you know, of course, he sang Aida and uh, Andrea Chenier and all those big operas, all the big Verdi operas, and he had a long career. He had did a concert two weeks before he died when he was 67, um, and uh, the voice was in perfect shape, and he died of kidney disease, unfortunately, for us all. But the voice stayed fine for an entire career with him stopping the breath right here. He used to demonstrate like this. Ah, 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 And I asked him, doesn't your voice get tired? Your throat get tired? He said, oh, no, no. He said, I never let the breath rise above this, right, this spot, that hole right there. I never let it come up here. But come up here, it'll damage my voice. So... And he said in Italian, Io fermo il fiato qui. I stop the breath here. So if I do that, there's a breath stop. Pa, pa. Now I take another step and, and reduce the tone and go. I studied with him for almost six months, and I thought, oh, I'll be the next dramatic tenor, except my voice was one-fifth the size of it. <laughs> I did all right, but no one could compare with him in those big roles. How do you do this? I think we're getting the idea now that if you establish a breast top someplace, and then you can, uh, you if those of you who remember uh, doing the magic of the, of the three of, of the three or four voices, where I was doing split tones, they used to have split tones. So you go, it work. It works the same way. When I go. Falsetto, the breath is leaking. I can show you in the paper. Falsetto moves my moves my paper. <laughs> the minute I connect it to the voice down here, it stops leaking. Now I can switch voices there. <laughs> I still am able to sing with this little and it doesn't really care. Going down, there's this one, the famous UC Berling and Tetrazzini and Lily Lehman, any number of singers use this one. Same thing. Pa pa now, I have to warn everybody that this way of singing requires tremendous breathing. You've got to get some big, big breaths into you. And so the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the energy that it, the breath is providing as you've been drawing it in, that type of energy becomes a support method for this little sound and lets you crescendo and sing with it bigger. And uh, you don't need to 100% like you're trying to emphasize that. You don't need 100%. Uh, it would be wrong to blow your voice. That would be like a form of yelling. So we don't want to yell. We just want to talk. So I go, Oh, you day I'm going to go to I'll see you later. And that's got to be enough. I've got to find a repertoire that I can sing like that. That I don't have to blow my head off all the time when I get up and sing. Some people are so intimidated by the big theaters and big orchestras. And the truth is, if you can use your voice 
correctly, and the miracle of the acoustics that the voice can produce, uh, you can sing in any big theater in the world over any big orchestra, and I've just almost done it. I've done a lot of big singers, uh, big things over big orchestras. And uh, um, uh, I guess my record orchestra was 166, and the record theater was about 6,500. And believe me, I've, nobody had any trouble hearing me at all if I could make myself use this, shall we say, uh, what Lily, uh, what um, what's her name, Adelina Patti said, don't sing breathy. So if I go, unforgettable, I have to have a microphone. If I go, oh, 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 I better have a microphone because that sound won't carry. If I stop my breath here with my nose open, Ma, 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 la, 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 la. Nobody hear that either. It doesn't carry worth a darn over a big auction, a big theater. You can sing that way. La, la, if I dark it, it'll be like, la, la, la. Well, I, it's still nasal. If I push my breath out, push my belly out when I breathe, la, it automatically uh, opens my notes and makes me sing uh, uh, nasally. And then it's no good. Caruso said in his book, never sing to the nasal cavity. And there's what's the reason why? Because it doesn't carry. And the way he talks about breathing, when you pull your abdomen in, Lily Lehman, the same thing. You pull your abdomen in and breathe way down behind you and go, and then you go, way of breathing closes my nose and my resonance goes up here and then you can hear me in every theater in the world without any problem at all. So we're going down to these breath stops and this one works fine. Pa, pa, la, 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 la. It's just fine. No problem. Uh, then I, I draw some singers sing on the epigastrium. Uh, now, not every young singer has an epigastrium, but the old geezers like me tend to have one that's taken years to develop. <laughs> We've got it. So we go, pa, pa, la, 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 that's more than enough voice to sing in any theater in the world. And that big bunch of blowing I was doing earlier that I confess I have used a few times, uh, that, that, there's no advantage to that except that you, you know, they say you fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And I hope you don't fool yourself and we don't fool ourselves and I don't fool myself. I hope I realize that we're oh, 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 oh. And all I'm doing is just blowing a lot of air. Why can't I just go, oh, 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 oh. And if that's not big enough, then don't sing that music. Then find something lighter, uh, you know, higher, something with uh, not such a thick orchestra. And these breath stops, and you might call this uh, step one, two, three, I go, pa, one, pa, two, ah, three. Pa, pa, ah, pa, pa, ah. See? So if I do that, now I'm going to go down to my navel and do it to my navel. Pa, pa, ya, donde la dolia dinza, po dal fin. I can sing all kinds of music that way and be heard everywhere. So this, it's, it's, we, the one thing we shouldn't worry about is being heard. We should worry about uh, freedom of the throat, control of the breath, all the things that make the voice. True mass singing, which is always above the nose. La, if I do it right, it has no effect on the tone when I close my nose because the voice is up here, not down there. If I try to sing up here, uh, I can blow air up and still get away with it, but you don't have to blow your air. You can breathe, use the breath stop method. You can use the breath stop method right there if you want. Pa, pa, <clears throat> so I'm going to go on down. Uh, in the center of my abdomen, 
between my navel and, uh, and my pubic bone, right in the center of my abdomen. Pa, pa. Why do I need more than that? More what? Woo, no air. Because that air that comes through that will move the paper will also wreck your vocal cords. So we want to make sure <coughs> that we are not moving the paper. This is the abdominal one. Pa! All I've got to do is not leak. Don't leak! You know, there are other techniques you can do. Uh, some of them are, they are all breath stop techniques, but the, the movement causes everything to happen, like uh, uh, the famous uh, uh, smelling the flower. La, oh, oh, oh. Just the fact that I do that, I smell the flower, causes reaction right here that controls my diaphragm and the breath doesn't leak. La, la, di, da, la. So why don't I just do that? Well, I just think it's a, an inferior education. <laughs> Vocally, I think you need to know a lot more about singing so you'll be safe for a lifetime. A lot of the singers that write me are very young. Some of them are, you know, 17, 8 years, 18 years old. You don't want to get, to get started on some method that's going to make them learn how to blow more air as they get older. You want them to get control of that breath as they get older until finally they can just stand up and sing with the acoustical uh, uh, qualities of, their, of each one's particular voice and what it's capable of. Some people are very big, have great big rib cages, so they got bigger, the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. I can play a big drum very softly, it sounds like a big drum, and I can play a little drum very loudly, it still sounds like a little drum. So if you are a little person, you should stop trying to sound like a big drum. If you're a big person, then by all means, try to sound as, as light as you, try to play as light as you can, but you will never sound like a little drum. So you'll sound like maybe a, 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 some kind of Heldon tenor trying to sing mezzo voce. <laughs> That's where Melchior sounded. He had this voice and he would demonstrate, you would would sound like, uh, uh, I wouldn't say baritone, but big, just huge in volume and color. And uh, we could say it was baritone, like guess we could. He came from baritone, but I always said he sounded like a tenor, just like the world's biggest tenor, that's all. Anyway, so I go on down, then I mean, there's the perineum, which is pa, pa. I'm choosing what, how, what amount of voice I want to use. And I'm holding my breath, if that's the way to put it. I feel like I'm underwater and I'm trying to hold my breath and I don't want, I don't want to breathe. But I'm trying to hold my, my breath full, not empty. I'm going to breathe. Now, empty is a whole different uh, ball of wax, as they say. That is uh, the fact that I blow out. Now I've gotten rid of all my air and I can't get any more air, air out now unless I push it because I've, I've relaxed. It's relaxed as much as it's gonna do. <sighs> I'm at the end of the relaxation process. Any air comes out now, <sighs> I have to push it out or squeeze it out, right? That's why it's called a spinto singer, or sometimes a spinto voice, because spinto comes from spingeter, which means to push. So if I want to, to sing that way, if I, if very few people have a genuine spinto voice, and you really need a very experienced teacher, or some professional singer to give you advice, and say, do you really, say, do I really have a spinto voice? If you do, you will benefit by learning to squeeze your, 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 your breath up. So I learned that from uh, Giovanni Martinelli, and you blow, uh, you know, like a third of your breath out, or you just drop and relax, you And then you start singing. If you've seen uh, some of the videos I've done, there was one called Snap Breathing, where we talk about the turkey baster. The turkey baster has a certain shape. I squeeze it, air comes out, when I relax, that little bulb pops open again. 
but it's not a balloon. I can't go. So my rib cage works like a turkey, turkey baster. So it's this big, I relax, and I go. Anyway, we can do more and more of uh, those. I can even do another. Um, Maybe, maybe make another video on on squeezing, <laughs> squeezing and pushing. Oh Lord! So the idea now we've gone all the way. We're on the tailbone now. Pa pa. In other words, I'm stopped to my breath on my tailbone, and now I'm using, you know, my 40%. And that's all I need. So it's pa, 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 always, pa, pa, pa. That third step is always behind uh, the, 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 stop, the stopping location. And after a while, you get so you don't need a location where you just stop your breath. You know where it is. I didn't need any location. There's the one that uh, Krista Ludwig used for 50 years, which was between her shoulder blades. And I go, pa, pa, no. So I just wanted to point out today that there's a third step to breath control that you can that you can base on stopping the breath. Pa pa no. and remember in that in that uh process back there going I've got from zero or from one to a hundred. What percentage do I want to use of that? So one, two, three percentage. One, two, three, crescendo de crescendo. One, two, three, start with your tiniest sound that you can possibly make. Papa. No action in the throat whatsoever. Okay? All right. Think about that. Give me a try, and let me give it a try, and let me know if you if uh, you have any questions about it. Bye.